Accounting, Community State Bank has taken great pride in being your hometown bank. With branches located in Cashin, Dover, and Hennessy, CSB strives to reflect the small town hospitality these communities are known for. Our friendly staff is here to serve you and provide one of the best banking experiences around, equipping our customers with the latest in banking technology combined with a personal down-home relationship. Come into one of our local branches or visit us at www.mycsb.com. Community State Bank, small town banking, the way it should be. Member FDIC. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Cashin FBC is a church seeking to grow in Christ and our love for the body of Christ. With ministries from children to youth to adults, we strive to present the gospel in an engaging and meaningful way. Sunday school meets at 9.45 a.m. and worship starts at 11 a.m. Children and youth meet on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Please check our website at cashinfbc.org for more information and we hope to see you this Sunday. Located a half mile east of Cashin. Oklahoma Career Tech's been serving up skills to doers just like you for over 100 years. But this ain't your great Grammys of Pop Pop Tech School. Oklahoma's favorite place to learn new skills keeps learning new tricks. Everyone knows the best way to learn is to do it yourself. Sir, you okay? Because you shouldn't have to wait to do what you love. Whatever you choose to do, do you. Oklahoma Career Tech. Absolute Pools, Lawns, and Landscape is not your ordinary pool builder. From traditional to exotic and anything in between, our staff offers paramount quality and service through the entire design and build process. We provide service to the entire OKC metro and surrounding towns. So relax knowing our team is wholeheartedly committed to building a trusting and lasting relationship with you. Visit us on Facebook or give us a call today at 405-285-9729. Absolute Pools, Lawns, and Landscape. At Maples Nixon Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people, and our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back, always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do, but it's not all that we are. We care. We'll stand beside you throughout the entire legal process, not just as lawyers, but as your friends. We are Maples Nixon Diesel Horse, and we are here to help. school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at Scordle.com slash stream. Kyle and Gina Van Druff have the answers to all your real estate and insurance needs. These guys will have you covered in a one-stop shopping experience. They are local agents, local supporters, and active in the Cashin community. They are also proud parents of past and present Cashin students. Kyle and Gina help their clients make the right choice. Don't wait till it's too late. Call 405 405- 607-4300. Go Wildcats and number 88. Let's have a great year. Walk it up. Get you some. Hey, Dirk. Now is the time to protect your family with Pioneer Smart Wi-Fi. Internet security is becoming more of a fear every day. Protect your family against malware, viruses, intrusions, cyber attacks, and more. Modern internet deserves modern security. Get the best of both worlds with Pioneer in-home Wi-Fi and the Smart Wi-Fi app. Download the Pioneer Smart Wi-Fi app today or visit GoPioneer.com for more information. 
Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Dieselhorst get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and off. Storm season is coming, people, and your first choice for roofing needs should be Rhino Roofing. Locally owned and operated, the Rhino specializes in all types of repair and replacement. Large scale, traditional, modern, unique roof lines, they can do it all. Protect your home and your family with the specialized services of Rhino Roofing. Visit our Facebook page today and make an appointment. Rhino Roofing is all the hype for any roof type. Looking for a solution to your water well problem or just needing a new well drilled? Western Drilling does water well drilling and repair. They are experts in pumping system installation, troubleshooting, and repair. Western Drilling works with domestic, ag, and irrigation wells. Give them a call today and explore all the solutions. Western Drilling supports Cashin High School. Go Wildcats! All right, welcome. It's uh, Tuesday Night Basketball, live from Cash in Oklahoma. My man Dirk Fippen over here on the side. I'm Neiman Abavi. Big shout-out to Dirk and the Fippen family. You all know them. Uh, having a little shout-out regarding uh, all the great stuff that's happening in the baseball world. We're reviewing the baseball schedule. The Cash and Boys will be uh, playing here pretty soon. Yeah, we'll see Dirk then. But, hey, we got basketball right now, and it's your Cash and Wildcats. War on 74 taking on... The Crescent Lady Tigers here. We appreciate you guys joining us. we got about 4.50 till tip. Uh, and uh, we're definitely super excited about uh, a gr another great night of basketball here from Cashin. Uh, joining me on the cameras in this production is my man Hank Brown, as well as Maddox Gibson. There was the cheer team uh, taco uh, fundraiser. You guys come on out if you have a chance and you're hungry. I think there was a line that was going out to school, but... Uh, I think Maddox is out there getting a taco. We'll see if we can find uh, Max here, or I'm sorry, Hank. But, um, again, appreciate you guys joining us. Wildcats coming off a huge win on the road. Uh, again, it's a big one. Uh, certainly appreciate that uh, over with Tonga Friday night. They won 58-51. It was Lauren Jenkins who went off for 22. I think that's a career high. Uh, Reese Williams with 14. Madison Westerhoff, sophomore with 10. And Wildcats had a great night. Uh, uh, on both ends, uh, certainly appreciated watching them. And they're continuing to grow. You know, uh, this situation where Coach Taylor is trying to continue to evolve and see what happens with this team, getting different parts going uh, as playoffs are looming here in a couple of weeks, starting on, uh, I believe, uh, February uh, 15th. So Wildcats have a big stretch here, uh, uh, hosting Crescent tonight on the road at Okarchi. I believe Okarchi ranked number ninth, I think, number nine, I believe, or so in Class A, definitely top ranked. Uh, and then uh, on the road again, oh, actually, yes, on the road again at Morrison uh, on uh, Thursday night. Uh, Wildcats will conclude with a road game the following week, I believe Monday, at Dale. And that's always been kind of a historic deal, right, out of conference, uh, in class to kind of get the, get the teams ready for uh, playoffs, which, again, will begin the weekend of the 15th. Uh, appreciate you guys joining us here. We'll go to a quick commercial. We've got about three minutes. I think Mr. Vaughn Rainey is going to join us. He's bringing his... Uh, Water bottle, Dr. Rainey, and we'll be back here in a sec, live on Cash and Wildcat TV.
Legacy Insurance and Financial Services is proud to be on Main Street in Cashin, Oklahoma, supporting our Wildcats while riding business throughout Oklahoma and surrounding states. Legacy agents who share over 40 years of experience will shop many carriers to fulfill all of your insurance and investment needs. We welcome face-to-face meetings, but if your needs require an online virtual relationship, we are versed at those too. Let the team of Chris Gibson, Chris Cochran, Aaron Phoenix, and Christina Branson at Legacy Insurance and Financial Services help you build Build your own legacy, one you will be proud to live and to leave. back cash and wildcats tv monday night basketball live from the show palace i think that's what we call the it show palace i uh, like it i don't know I think it's gone through many names yeah, in my time yes but we're gonna go with that joining me up here in the upper corners of the uh, show palace is my man dr von Ray. can we say dr rainy yet uh not legally but you know around <laughs> here maybe we can get away with it all right i love it well von welcome to the broadcast we appreciate you jumping on i kind of had a Twist the arm a little bit, but appreciate you joining us. I'd say you, you got you to find me on test day. I took my test this morning. I don't have anything going on tomorrow, so I'm, I can do it today. All right, very good. Well, the Cash and Wildcats 8-11 and on a two-game winning streak. Last game they were able to win against Watonga. That was a good one. Were you able to catch any of that? I did. I was able to catch. I, I keep up with everything, uh, you know, watch the broadcast when I can, but I'm always checking scores or Twitter or one or the other uh, trying to figure out how my Wildcats are doing. Yeah, so Lauren Jenkins' cuz went off for 22. I saw that. She had a great night, and uh, I think that's a career night for her. I believe so, all in the second half if I was, if, <laughs> all, if the family yes. group message holds that, true. That, that was correct. Yeah, absolutely amazing. We're going to have uh, – National Anthem, and uh, we'll have a lineup. So please join us here for a sec as the uh, Cash and Pet Band will be honoring America. God bless America, greatest country in the entire universe, and super blessed to be here in Cashin, Oklahoma, and super grateful that you guys are joining us. So the starting lineup, Lovett, Cummings, Cox, Bell, Dreyer for Coach Kyle Hatfield and the Crescent Lady Tigers, 3-15 and 15 on the season. Alright, 
the Wildcats. See a little change here. Reese Williams, Lauren Jenkins, Madison Westerhoff, Megan Schaefer, a lot of juniors and sophomores. Starting tonight over Madison McCracken will be Abby Hopkins, another sophomore. We talked about them all season being kind of fifth and sixth, inter intertwined, interchangeable folks. But uh, the Wildcats ready to go with a pet man. Getting this going with a rocking out in the other corner. So, uh, Vaughn, you've been able to watch a little bit. Uh, have you seen a, a you know, two-game winning streak? You know, any ideas in terms of what's been working for Coach Taylor and the bunch? Uh, I'd like to see they've gotten into it. It seems to be more of an offensive rhythm, I think, early season, and part of it just being young. You know, starting three sophomores, maybe now four. I'm not actually positive what grade Abby's. Yeah, Abby's a sophomore Abby's as well. So now starting uh, – with such a uh, three sophomores and two juniors, it just took a little bit to kind of get everyone's feet under them, everyone understand their roles, but they seem to be doing that now. Uh, obviously, the last couple of games, Lauren's taking on more of a scoring role, and Megan's still playing great and doing her thing inside, and, you know, you're now to a point where defense kind of have to pick their poison, so we'll see what Crescent tries to do tonight and see if the Wildcats can take advantage. On the tip, Wildcats will win that, so it'll be your catch and Wildcats, white tops, white bottoms, against orange on orange with a little black trim. Megan Schaefer with the with the tip. Wildcats facing a little man defense here against the Crescent Tigers. Westerhoff, who had uh, a great night the other night against Watonga, three made threes, as well as Reese Williams. Uh, it was a hot time behind the arc. That's definitely a difference maker for any team. Absolutely. Let's see, we'll get one to go right there. Lauren Jenkins from the angle three is no good. Fighting for the rebound is Abby Hobgood, and it'll be one and done for the Wildcats as uh, Tatum Cummings. Cousin to Reese Williams. We've got a little uh, cross county battle here. I did not know that. You didn't know that? Fun fact. Yeah, absolutely. So I think they, they run against each other in track as well. Okay. So uh, certainly, I, I guess uh, it's a house divided, I, I guess, within the uh, uh, Williams uh, household. But it'll go out of bounds to the Crescent Tigers. Wildcats in that man defense. They're going to they're gonna pressure you. We've got to walk them just like that. Turnover number one. So Wildcats will take over. A little high, high pressure here as they're gonna try to dictate here. No trap though out of that man. Abby Hobgood getting quite a bit of heat over on that side. High post touch, go. To the rack, oh. Reese Williams, no foul, but offensive rebound and bucket, Megan, Megan Schaefer. Wildcats draw first blood. A lot of pressure from the Wildcats, quickly broken by Cummings. She'll get to the rack. Jenkins with a bump. Seven. Yeah, no call. So here the officials are kind of allowing a little bit of bump. Which I personally always preferred the, the let us play approach <laughs> to the game. We'll see if it holds up because that's what you that's when you start to get in trouble is when it starts one way and shifts. Um, but if they'll let us play like that, I know Lauren won't have a problem getting to throw a few shoulders around. <laughs> Dump down cross is stolen. Turnover. Dangerous pass in traffic. Quickly back down is Kaylin Cox. Actually, it's Kaylin Cox that's the cousin. I apologize. Oh, okay. My apologies. Dumped down into Cummings. She'll back out three balls up. That's well short by Kenzie Bell. Rebound to Megan Schaefer. She's got a couple rebounds. Quickly down, right side. Oh. And that was a tweener. Lauren's like, that was for Westerhoff. Let's call a name there, Lauren. <laughs> We've already seen the Wildcats move Schaefer a little bit out of the block. She's drawn a couple double and triple teams, so kind of creating some space here. Coach Taylor moving uh, Schaefer out. Quickly down, right side. Euro will get the call and continuation. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow, so give credit to Kaylin Cox. I guess that's cousin versus cousin. They probably have seen each other a couple times. Yeah, they'll, they'll be talking about that one over the next family gathering. And you know that story, right? Basketball oh, 100%. 100%. <laughs> Luckily, we were on the same team when it came to actual, you know, in school game day, but we definitely, we find a way to argue one way or another. First free throw is good for Kaylin Cox. Again, Coach Hatfield in the bunch, 3-15. and 15. They've been on a, it's, it, they've, They've been on a 2-1-2 streak. Actually, they're 2-3 and three over the last five. A couple right. postponements. She makes both. Oh, hit the middle. Westerhoff we finds Williams. A little errant pass there. And uh, we'll have a walk. And turnovers has been the name yeah. of the game. That's been the bugaboo for this Cash and Wildcats. You talk about youth. Some errant passes, walks. And it's good right now. I'm not I'm not plugged in well enough. I believe playoffs begin next week, so yep, we can kind of get those get those last few bugs ironed out. Uh, 
obviously hope to learn in a win. But if we can continue to do that, uh, I think we're playing our best basketball of the year right now, it seems like. So, uh, <laughs> good. I say that. Hopgood with a little bit of extra body there. She gets called. That's her first. Second team foul on the Wildcat zero for Crescent. A little substitution here is Addison McCracken, the sophomore, checks in. We talk about they've been kind of interchangeable offense, defense for the two. Both average right around two or three points a game. In the corner, Westerhoff, nice pressure. He we'll get the turnover. He's in that extra defender on the sideline. 2 2 1, actually a 2 1 2 look here. They're trying to get that trap. Wildcats will get it across. Westerhoff doesn't look to the basket. She does now. Shoot it. Ooh. Okay. Westerhoff, a little curl here. Asking, Jenkins asking for the ball again. Into there's Schaefer. That's a good touch. Inside out. Addison McCracken. Three is too long. Oh, mind, that's a good shot. That inside out's going to work a lot because they're paying a lot of attention to Megan right now. On the inside. Let's that's see if I can. And that's a walk call, so that's yep. number 10 that's checked in, and that is um, actually, I'm sorry, starter Micaiah Levitt with the turnover. And that's that's what helped Wildcats the other night, Friday night against, you know, Watonga. When you hit threes, mm -hmm. that's going to open things up. Right. Williams, I and Schaefer there across court. That would have been a dangerous pass. And that as was. I said, and got to take care of the ball. There's no reason to force that. You got it across the timeline. Just set up. Well, and I like – Madison's trying to get trying to get herself open on a cut to the basket right there. Which she'll take the inside angle and cut to the middle of the paint instead of the backside. She's probably still open right there. Schaefer from Williams off the glass, no good. Rebound in the hands of Mackenzie Dreyer. That's a missed opportunity for the Wildcats. Loose ball. Good hustle. Here we go. In the hands of Williams, fast break. Oh, right hand to the cup. There we go. And good it's job. good. And that's how Reese is going to hit you. She's going to get you in the half court with threes and then on fast break and transition. Wildcats up 4-2. to two. A little token pressure there. Williams comes back off a little push off. Love it. 429. Appreciate you guys joining us. Nice close out there by Schaefer. And that will be a backcourt violation. The Wildcats with the ball. Not the cleanest of starts here for either Not team. Not the cleanest of starts by either way. It's, this is a... Uh what we call knocking the rust off early, I guess, but we're going both ways, so it's all right. <laughs> Others might call it a, a defensive war. <laughs> Little substitution here for Coach uh, Hatfield and the, and the Tigers as number 20, Aja House, is checked in, as well as number 22, Zori Wilson. Madison Westerhoff, Wilson on her, will set up Ooh, around the horn it goes. Schaefer. Oh, good defense. Schaefer coming down, great pass. We give credit to Mackenzie Dreyer with the block. Really nice recovery off the uh, double back screen there. Aja House up top. Actually, I apologize, that was Wilson. Little curl action, floater is up and good. Okay. Give credit to number 10, My Micaiah, or Micah Lovett. That's her first buckets of the, of the game, and it's 4-4. 342, quickly down, cross-court pass. Into Schaefer, she draws the double, kick to Jenkins. Jenkins will pass up the three, cup drive to the basket. It's blocked, gets her own rebound, it's good. Lauren with her first points. Is that McKenzie Dreyer is affecting shots on the inside. She's got good length, she's as tall as Schaefer. Oh, timeout, so Coach Hatfield almost getting the turnover. Calls timeout, we'll think it over. We'll go to timeout ourselves, be right back. Wildcats up two, six to four. Welcome back, Cash and Wildcats TV. Monday Night Basketball live from the Show Palace. Neiman Abavi, Vaughn Rainey. Rainey tonight's game one as the Wildcats take it on the Lady Tigers. Up two, 320. You were talking about that length of Mackenzie Dreyer. That's definitely been a big part of this game. Speaking of the devil. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Schaefer with the rebound down the left side, finding Hobgood, who's checked in for uh, Madison McCracken. Three balls up. Schaefer with the offensive rebound, up there and we, under. I'd like to see Schaefer go up right there. Let's see if she'll do this one. There we go. 
She'll get the contact and gets it. And I agree with you, partner. So good work there. Stay patient. And Schaefer will be rewarded with two free throws. Is it more of a catch and just go to the basket? or I would just like to see. I, Schaefer goes that up and under a ton. She's really good at it. I would just like to see Schaefer maintain some of the aggression we saw early in the season. Uh, last couple games, you know, Lauren's been hitting shots and kind of taking over what you might call the primary scoring role. But Megan needs to continue to understand that all that comes because people are paying attention to her. And Lauren's a point guard. She's a scoring guard when she needs to be. Um, but all of that is based off of they're paying attention to Megan. Okay, now yep. it's time for Lauren to go get a basket. Then if they come back out to Lauren and Megan's left one-on-one, -on -one, she's got to go take advantage of that every time. Well, core press, and Wildcats are going to get a turnover here. Man side this time. So good work there by the Wildcats, Westerhoff and Abby Hobgood. Intended was uh, Zori Wilson on that pass, but that goes out of bounds. It'll go to the Wildcats up 4, 8-4, to four, 251 here first quarter. Jenkins, Westerhoff, Hobgood, McCracken, and Schaefer in for the Wildcats. Westerhoff looking to get to Schaefer in and out. McCracken with a jumper. Gets your own rebound. Looks like we're going to have a push. And great call there by the C official. So out of bounds will be the Wildcats. Westerhoff will get that one. It'll be, uh, looks like uh, Micah Lovett will check out. It'll be number 24 checking him back in as Kinsey Bell. McCracken on the baseline looking for that shift to Schaefer. She does find her back out to McCracken. Oh, back to her. Doesn't set up for the shot, but goes ahead and reset. That's where if you're a three-point shooter, you want to grab that and shoot it. One on one, go score. Up and under, right-hander no good. One and done for the Wildcats. And give credit to Mackenzie Dreyer. She's by herself. She's playing really well. That'll be Zori Wilson up top. She's uh, going to work it down into Dreyer. And right hand layup is good. That's Dreyer's first points of the game. And that cuts the cash and lead. I apologize. To eight to six. Ooh, Get that scope line. There we go. Full court press. A little token there. Westerhoff will come back up. Looks like a little zone look here. Two, three now for Coach Hatfield and the Lady Tigers. Looks like they're going to have Schaefer kind of relocate. High post, low block. Shaver needs to watch the feet in the paint. There we go. Abby Hobgood around the baseline. They'll use her back down high post. Jenkins doesn't look to shoot, but she'll kick it out. Three balls up. That's a little long. Rebound to number 15, Kaylin Cox. And she'll work back across the timeline to number 22, Zori Wilson. Wildcats back in that man D. 123 here, up two. Anything here from the man defense that you see? Not a lot for them. I mean, it's somewhere between ugly offense both ways and really good <laughs> defense both ways. Uh, this is kind of one of those moments, at least from the Wildcat perspective, which you know is the only one that I take. Um, I'd kind of like to see Lauren Jenkins force that issue a little bit more yep. right there. I mean, obviously we don't have any seniors on this team, but she is the, the most senior player. And, you know, the team's kind of in drag right now. Game, The whole game's kind of in drag. Uh, obviously Megan's missed a couple inside. Good finish. I like that shot. Um, but would like you'd like to see kind of your, your leaders of the team force one, get something put in the basket, and just kind of give that team a little bit of a spark right now. I think that might need to come from Lauren. Yeah, I agree with you. There's a couple times she's been in the lane and she hasn't gone uh, to the basket, kind of hoping to see L Train go through. That's going to be a foul. It's going to be the third team foul in the Wildcats, second on Hobgood. So she'll check out in. Coming in for her will be McCracken. Wildcats again with three fouls, Crescent with two. 45 seconds on the clock. Under a minute here, first quarter. Kind of a low-scoring affair. Packed house. Oh, always is for Cashton Crescent. Yeah, a little war on 74. We're also going to have, I think, a, a junior a cheerleading event here at halftime, so you don't okay. want to miss that. So you can draw in some of those parents to come in. And if you want to get some tacos, the fundraiser for the Wildcats for the cheer team is right now. Pass into McCracken. That's stolen by Mackenzie Dreyer. Another slow loper pass across the court. What are your thoughts on cross-court passes? Uh, you better throw them early and you better throw them fast, and that was <laughs> neither one. <laughs> so turnover there, fortunately, for the Wildcats is the cr Tigers and Wildcats are probably close to double digits together in terms of turnovers to today already in the first quarter. 21.3. Jenkins will work off that screen quickly down to Westerhoff. Passes up the three. 
Wildcats passing up a lot of shots. Spin move to the cup, back out around the horn. Three balls up, angle up. Yeah, in and out. Jenkins going to fight for the rebound. Come out. Okay. Oh. oh, she knocks it off. Nice work there by number 20, Aja House. And at the buzzer, it's no good. It'll be your Wildcats up two, eight to six. We'll take a quick timeout. Be back, second quarter action. Welcome back, second quarter action, Wildcats 8-6. It's uh, Neiman Ababi, Vaughn Rainey bringing you tonight's action. We're on 74, this time we're in Cashin. The internet's better, it smells better, just everything is better. Always, always. <laughs> it's all, it's, it's, this is a local holiday, we're on 74 for any sport. All right, the Wildcats uh, led by Megan Schaefer's four points, uh, Lauren Jenkins with two, Reese Williams with two. Kaylin Cox on the Crescent side with one, Micah Lovett with two, and Mackenzie Dreyer, the big center for the Crescent Tigers, and our pet band killing it tonight with a little Chicago. All right, fresh eight on the board. There we go, Reese. Reese, Reese Williams steal there. Back down to McCracken. Wildcats will go with Williams, Jenkins, McCracken, Schaefer, and Westerhoff. Short corner to... Schaefer cross court pass to Westerhoff. Let's see what happens here. A little zone, or actually a little man look here. A little curl. McCracken to the cup off there the screen. Go. It counts. Great job. Great read there by Addison McCracken. Wildcats up four, matching their biggest lead of the night. A little screen there for Aja House. Aja House. Zori yeah. Wilson, I apologize. And in. Who was that that scored that? Uh, uh, that may have been Aja House. Okay. Was it was it her all the way? All right. No, so she dropped it off. Did to 24, Kenzie it? Bell. I think it may have been there Kenzie Bell. All right. Backwards. It's all good. Williams eyes the three, passes it up. So it's seven minutes, back and forth affair. Schaefer. Oh, there you go. Good left way. hand is good. It's a little body there. I like that. Megan going towards the basket. And she'll figure out that left hand over, you know, obviously the rest of this season. But next summer and the next two years, she'll be a, a big problem for defenses to continue to deal with. Three balls up, and it's good. Wow. Kaylin Cox with the three. She's got four points, and it's a crescent lead. Actually, I apologize. It's not. We got a foul down low. We got a walk. I apologize. I thought we were going to get a foul call there. So turnover, Reese Williams there on the walk. 6.36. Uh, substitution again here for Coach uh, Hatfield. Wildcats go about six. They go about six deep. Mm -hmm. It looks like Coach Hatfield has been working quite a bit, maybe seven or eight. Up top on the screen is number 12, Tatum Cummings. She'll give it up to House. House left-hand drive on Jenkins. Good close out there by Jenkins, not letting her get deep in the lane. Nice work by McCracken. Wildcats moving their feet on D, no reaching. Using the body. Appreciate our three-man crew out here working. They're going to have a... Good defense, Reese Williams. She's got a little extra... A little extra uh, passion here, a little bit of energy tonight, as, as we talked about Kalen Cox, cousin of Reese Williams. This is bragging rights till the next matchup. That's exactly right. Or until track season, one or the other. Okay, see, there you go. <laughs> Wildcat defense working on the man side. H a House getting hounded. Megan Schaefer, and that'll be a jump ball. Possession arrow in favor of the Wildcats. You can see they're trying to get deeper and deeper in the lane on those uh, on that weave, but uh, give credit to the cash and guards keeping the crescent guards out. They're playing really good defense, and we've been able to heat them up a little bit. I'd almost like to see us get back into, if if not a full court, at least a half court, so give a little more token pressure. See if we can't speed them up, get a couple more cheap turnovers. Go finish, Lauren. Left-hand finish is not there. Going up and the foul. Good work there. And that's what dribble penetration does, right? So you've got a guard that's coming in. Defense has to come off. That leaves Megan Schaefer there for the offensive rebound and a chance for two free throws. Exactly. Megan already made two free throws on the night. She's got uh, six points, 
First foul on number 24, Kenzie Bell. Wildcats uh, right around 55% shooting on the on the year, better than the boys. Better than the boys this year? Yes, boys? Okay. yes. It seems like every year, I feel like. Well, but. So I, knew, I, I knew that was better than the boys <laughs> last year. I wasn't sure about this year. Yeah, this year they're right around 50%. In and out, I jinxed her. That's unfortunate. I apologize, Megan. So Wildcats with the steal. Westerhoff. Westerhoff yep. will curl back out. Wisely pulls back out. No reset. Jenkins Shoot will eye out. Long three. Bang, Lauren Jenkins, love it. Wildcats with their first made three of the day. Extend that lead back up to four, largest uh, matching their mar largest lead. Little, ooh, almost get oh, the walk. Like walk. Oh, and they get the foul. I agree with you, partner. I thought that was a walk there at first. What is the what does the pressure do? A lot of times, you know, I mean, it, is it is it to try to get a steal in the backcourt, or are there other reasons for a well, press? When you've got a Reese Williams, the goal probably is to get a steal. Um, around the line, the reason I'd like to see is Crescent just, I don't know. I'm not going to speak to their age. I don't know it for sure, but they seem a little susceptible to getting sped up, and I would just like to see them rush their shot, uh, maybe, take a, maybe take a bad one at some point in the game, if not just shoot, uh, shoot one going a little too fast, even if they are open because we're, reba we're rebounding the basketball well right now. Yeah, I love it. I love it. That, just that speed will create turnovers. Absolutely. Well, that, on its own without having a foul. Hey, Oof. Move your feet out there, Schaefer. I love it. Reese Williams still tip out. Left hand, to the dr left hand drive there by number 24, Kenzie Bell. That's her fourth point of the game. Good take by her. Wildcat lead back to two. Quickly down, McCracken back to Westerhoff. Wildcats will reset. Westerhoff, all right, baseline three is up. Yep. Just Lauren McCracken with the run Ooh, out. Turn around. Another offensive rebound for the Wildcats. Jenkins to the cup. Finish. Okay, not a bad one to see. Williams three. Fight for it. Is uh, there you go, Megan. Good job. Megan working against three Crescent Tigers. <laughs> and it'll be cash and basketball on the baseline. That's going to be the fourth team foul against Crescent. That's number two against number 24, Kenzie Bell, who just had that bucket. She'll have a seat. Wildcats on the end line, little uh, high line up here for Coach Taylor as they break out. Looking for Schaefer rolling down, not there. Westerhoff back to Jenkins. Woof, a little strong there from the baseline. Ooh, Rebound in the hands. Open the window. Zori Wilson. She had time. Looked like she rushed it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, a little bit. Wildcats stay in that man defense up to 15 to 13. Second quarter action. Loose ball. Now it'll go out of bounds. Reese Williams says that was a steal. So you got Schaefer matched up with Mackenzie Dreyer. Schaefer trying to keep her out of the block. Loose, wow. Yeah, it could be argued. It looks like Westerhoff will get the foul. I think that's number two on her, it is. So foul count mounting here for the Wildcats. As Hobgood with two, Westerhoff with two. Speaking of Hobgood, she checks back in. Well, did you ever have issues with two fouls in the, in the first half? Uh, once upon a time against a, a school by a similar name, actually. <laughs> Back in December of 2015, if I remember correctly. <laughs> but I didn't make it this long, so it's okay. <laughs> what was Hardaway's rule about two fouls in the first half? Sit down. Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> I believe he may still have that same rule. It was definitely the rule in 2015-2016. Uh, All right, Wildcats off the turnover. We'll get it. Around the horn it goes. Taking their time. Dumped down to Schaefer. High post. Inside to Hobgood underneath, and it's nice. oh, in and out. She gets her own rebound to the oh, ground. We'll get yeah. a walk. That's unfortunate. So great pass there by Schaefer. She drew the triple. Hobgood, Johnny on the spot on the low block, just couldn't finish. So the 316, another turnover. Wildcats going to press you. There we go. See if we can speed him up a little bit. The rotation. The Tatum Cummings backed out to uh, number 33, Dreyer. And they'll get it across the timeline. Good defense, Megan. It's Kaylin Cox, jumper. Good block, Megan. Yeah, block from behind. Megan averages about a block a game. That would go out of bounds. So good work, cash and defense. Both coaches staying tight with the press here. They're not going to give up on it. Maybe, like, like we talked about earlier, he's looking to speed him up or maybe get a cheap bucket or two. We've seen Reese get out in transition. I think uh, Madison Westerhoff got out in transition one yep. time. So. In a game like this, you'll take any cheap bucket you can get. <laughs> High screen and roll there. Actually, no roll as uh, Reese will get that inside to Schaefer, inside out. Back to her. Yeah, she needed to go there back. Go. She does. Good. 
Up and under spin move, gets a foul. I like that a lot. So that'll draw a foul. Is this number two? Yes, it is. It's number two against Mackenzie Dreyer, and this is the battle we want to watch here. Good job there by Schaefer. Is she getting deep enough in the lane? I'd like to see her try to catch a little bit deeper. She's doing really good work once she has the ball, and I'd love to see, especially over the course of this year, her get more patient down there on the block, making one, two moves, passing out when she needs to, or just being patient until she gets the angle that she wants. Uh, I would say the next step, like you said, was before she catches that ball, uh, on that repost before reentry right there to try to get another six inches or a foot of space so she's closer to the basket uh, and turn those buckets into and ones. Yeah, well, very good. Getting getting educated. Wildcats press broken there, three on three. A little Euro right hand, no good. Schaefer, Jenkins left side. She's got numbers, two on two. Good score. She'll go to the cup, draws Here the foul. Go. And there's the reach on number 22, Zori Wilson. And Lauren Jenkins goes to the line. Again, uh, defense turning into offense, and I love seeing that uh, as uh, Lauren Jenkins. And that's what I absolutely love about Lauren's game. She's, she has no fear going in the lane. No, none at all, none at all. She's been playing with uh, older cousins, older brothers, older sisters her whole life, so she knows what it's like to get beat up a little bit. <laughs> well, a strong lineage, right, if you think about uh, all the brothers, sisters, and cousins, right? Yeah, she's got a little pedigree to her. Uh, <laughs> And definitely we all enjoy uh, watching Lauren. She's, got, she's continued to get better every year. So uh, as a family, we love seeing that. And as a cousin, I'm very proud of her. <laughs> and we got one more to go. We got little cousin Vinny, right? Little, little Vincent, Vincent's getting yeah. so – he's getting better so fast. Uh, I'm very excited to see the, uh, the next iteration of the Nabavi yeah. Rainey duo. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't get to spend any time with uh, the oldest Nabavi boy. Uh, but, but Vance made up for lost time with me there. That's, so. that's right. I met little brother Vinny. You knew what I was talking Yay. about. But uh, love seeing that. Uh, whoop. Oh, whoop. Yeah, we'll have the walk. There Excellent. So Lauren Jenkins able to convert on those two free throws. Wildcats with their biggest lead of six. 19-13, under two here, second quarter. Turnover will lead to a chance for the Wildcats to take on the end line. Again, Schaefer, Williams, Jenkins, Westerhoff, and Hobgood. Hobgood with two fouls here. We'll have to take a look at that as well as Westerhoff. Jenkins will go ahead and... Curl back, back to the middle. I think she had an opportunity to go right hand strong, but to Wildcats again, get it across. No rush here. Westerhoff uh, taking it around the corner as Schaefer drawn the automatic double team as number 14 has checked in Kylie Bell as uh, number 33, Mackenzie Dreyer. Oh, nope. Jenkins like to the that. cup. It's good. How did that happen? I'm actually not sure because when the pass left Westhoff's hand, I thought it was going to Megan and then Lauren appears. So I'm not going <laughs> to pretend to know GD what the, the scheme or what the, <laughs> the play design was there, but I love it and we should do it again. And Back Lauren door. should get her head turned around on defense. <laughs> Backdoor cut is missed. Loose ball. Wow, a lot of contact. Reese Williams is able to get that one. She's going to draw a crowd. Skips it back out to Schaefer. Thankfully, Schaefer and her length is able to get it. Jenkins will curl back out, maybe slow down a little bit here and reset inside to Schaefer on the low block, up and under, right there hand off the glass. Good it's good. And there again, you see Megan being patient, getting the angle she wanted. Uh, probably could have forced it going left right there. I think she would have definitely last year, probably earlier this year. Um, but getting her balance, getting back to her strong hand and finding the glass there. To the cup. Looks like loose ball. It's going to go out of bounds. Are you okay? Okay. Little visit here from superstar seventh grader Catherine Nabavi. Is it K-Bob? What up, K-Bob? K-Bob, I love that. Uh, junior high uh, uh, schedule or gener junior high uh, season is completed. Wildcats, both boys and girls, did really well this season. Future is bright. Three balls up, no good. Rebound to Williams. Quickly down across the middle. She's got numbers. Left hand. And give credit to number 20 on the slap out, Aja House. You know, that's a situation maybe if Reese comes up high on that. Go she, high, sweep low. I uh, actually I got in trouble for it a number of times <laughs> by, by your, yours truly, Coach Hardaway. But I, I may have uh, come to a jump stop, give a quick head fake, see if she'll fly by. When they don't fly by, you tend to look real dumb as an offensive player, though. <laughs> Something I have personal experience with. Clock at 23. Westerhoff getting pressured. Coach right. Taylor said that's enough. So we'll take a time out. This will be a quick one. Be right back, CWTV. Wiggins, Sewell, and Ogletree is dedicated to championing our clients through complicated and challenging litigations. We pride ourselves on a proven track record of success brought forth by fierce litigation skills.
The lawyers and staff of our firm are dedicated to effective and personalized representation for every client who entrusts our service. Uncompromising integrity, unparalleled results. Call Wiggins, Sewell, and Ogletree, 405-232-1211. All right, welcome back, Cash and Wildcat TV, Monday Night Basketball Live from the Show Palace. Chris Gibson's here, giving us a little mojo. Vaughn Rainey joins us. Chris, you want a headset? He says no, he got all those beautiful babies. Chris, you need to keep making babies, they're awesome. Keep going, my man. Uh, Chris says that's the last one, one of our fantastic sponsors and just friends of Squirtle Legacy Insurance Financial Services. 14 seconds, Jenkins to Westerhoff. Inside to Schaefer. Schaefer had that left hand. She oh, double yeah, dribbles. She did. She double thought. You did. Thought about that one twice. That's one where, you know, I've been complimenting her patience the whole time right there. Maybe just go get you two points. So Westerhoff with two fouls will have a seat. Reese Williams will have a seat. Coming in will be Cheyenne Henry as well as Sierra McCracken. So a couple of uh, sophomores. Or actually, Cheyenne's a junior. My apologies to Cheyenne. Full court press, 8.4, no foul. Jenkins. Don't foul, Warren. So she's got to know better than that. She does know better than that. I don't know what that was. And it was the right hand of the defender, right? So, you know, take that one away first. So she picks up a tic-tac. That's going to be six fouls against Cash and quickly in. No walk call. Don't foul. Aja House, deep. Wow. Headline, no foul, thankfully. And that will be the end. A first half action, second quarter over as the Wildcats up big, 23 to 13. They took that two point lead, extended to 10, and we'll go to halftime. So Wildcats up 10 here. Hang tight with us. We've got uh, Little Girls Cheerleader Clinic business going on. Amber Hopgood said, You better make sure and keep that camera on. So we will not be going to timeout. I'm going to turn up the bands, going to turn up the house mic, and we're going to watch some fantastic cheer clinic, some of our young cheerleaders coming out on the court right now. All right, so big love here for Andrew Hopgood and Casey Williams. They do a fantastic job with our varsity cheer, junior high cheer. Looks like here we got a whole bunch of future cheerleaders. Man, the school has grown. I can't imagine all these young girls, but we've got a ton of them. I see some regular, I see some familiar faces out there. And big shout out. We'll uh, turn it over and let you guys enjoy. Can they sit anywhere else? Where's God? No, not Well, you definitely got. No, I didn't. I literally heard. Yeah. 
Founded by Jesse and Amy McCracken, Rural Pest Solutions is a cash-and-based, family-owned and operated company. Our focus is on providing the highest level of customer service while effectively treating many common invaders, including spiders, ants, roaches, mice, mosquitoes, fleas, ticks, and termites. Flexible scheduling and superior customer service are our top priority. Call us today to schedule your appointment, 405-283-6565. Oklahoma's number one high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at Scordle.com slash stream.
Todd Miller and this is Grain and Grange, still the coolest furniture store you've never heard of. Come see us. At Water Heater Man, we specialize in repairing and replacing all water heaters. We service the OKC metro and surrounding towns with fast, reliable service. We keep our vans fully stocked with essential parts needed for basic repairs, and new tanks are always on the vans ready to go. We offer free estimates on all jobs with financing options available. We match manufacturer's warranty for all newly replaced water heaters. We'll get your water heater back up and running as fast as possible so you don't have to put your life on hold waiting for service. Give us a call today, 405-844-TANK. That's 405 405- 5-844-8265. Go Wildcats! Presenting Ricardo Ranch. Located within the Cashin School District and offering homebuyers the experience of small town charm with the modern world of shopping, dining, and healthcare just minutes away. Situated east of Highway 74, Regato Ranch boasts one-acre home sites with privacy and ample space to retire or raise a family. To build your next home from the ground up or to inquire about new properties currently for sale, contact Brandon or Shannon Cotter with Iron Creek Homes and C7 Realty. Come find your forever home at Regato Ranch. And go Wildcats! For 31 years and counting, Community State Bank has taken great pride in being your hometown bank. With branches located in Cashin, Dover, and Hennessy, CSB strives to reflect the small town hospitality these communities are known for. Our friendly staff is here to serve you and provide one of the best banking experiences around, equipping our customers with the latest in banking technology combined with a personal down-home relationship. Come into one of our local branches or visit us at www.mycsb.com. Community State Bank, small town banking, the way it should be. Member FDIC. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Cash and FBC is a church seeking to grow in Christ and our love for the body of Christ. With ministries from children to youth to adults, we strive to present the gospel in an engaging and meaningful way. Sunday school meets at 9.45 a.m. and worship starts at 11 a.m. Children and youth meet on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Please check our website at cashinfbc.org for more information, and we hope to see you this Sunday. Located a half mile east of Cashin. All right, welcome back. Second half action about to start third quarter. Neiman Abavi. Vaughn Rainey bringing you tonight's uh, action here as the Cash and Wildcats game one, taking on the Lady Tigers up 10, 23 to 13. Wildcats, again, explosive 15 point second quarter, uh, led by Megan Schaefer's 10 points. The sophomore was able to chip in and, and do well at the free throw line. Lauren Jenkins came through, hit a big three. She's got nine, and then two points from Reese Williams and two points from Addison McCracken. Uh, for the Crescent Tigers, they are led by Kaylin Cox and Kenzie Bell with four. Two from Micah Lovett and Mackenzie Dreyer. For the Wildcats, they're going to come back out on defense. Looks like it will be uh, Schaefer, Hobgood, Westerhoff, Williams, and Jenkins. Regular five here. Dumb down. Nice pass Deep inside. Megan Schaefer. Get the rebound afterwards. Get Great. defense again. <laughs> Part two there. Okay. We'll, Loose. We'll, we'll take it like that. <laughs> Loose ball knocked out of bounds. That will stay cash and ball here. It will go to cash and ball. It's knocked out by number 10, Micah Lovett. Hey, and love seeing Schaefer straight up. Didn't have to force anything there. No, she's done a much better job of that, not coming down, just blocking with the wrists instead of the shoulders. What my, always my advice to, you know, tall people since I was such a <laughs> prolific shot blocker in high school. Absolutely love it. And that's part of the maturity process you've been talking about. Skip pass over to Hit it. Westerhoff. Three balls up. That's just long. Fighting for the rebound is Hobgood. And that's going to be number three over the back. And I appreciate the effort. I would rather see more effort to try to get underneath the block mm. out than to jump over. But tough place, tough, wrong place, wrong time. Yeah, another one of those settings where you want to do your work early, kind of like we were talking with Schaefer in the post. Uh, if we can, uh, you're, you're going to be able to get away with a, a, a get away with a lot more pushing. Uh, before the ball comes off the rim than you are after. Skip pass, Kalen Cox, no right, good. There we go. Schaefer draws a, a bevy of Crescent Tigers quickly down left side. Westerhoff will drive to the bucket, skip pass to McCracken. She loses it. Wildcats are able to retain possession, actually knocked out, and Schaefer gets that one back up and under, nothing good. there. Good back cut. cut to Jenkins, right hand, no call. Gets her own rebound, a lot of contact. Wildcats will come back into Schaefer, low block, and reset 650. That there was a... Crazy uh, possession there thus far. 
Offensive rebounding, rebounding, helping the Wildcats here tonight. Good cut, Lauren. Go finish. Right hand cup. It's good. Count it. Good job. L train. Two, two. Getting it going. She's got the first points of the Wildcats here in the second half. And we've seen quite a bit of that right here is a high post catch and, and dump down. Well, that's an, and that's another one where Megan gets that touch and then the perimeter defenders turn their head and Lauren's doing a great job of cutting at the right time there and then going and finishing strong at the basket. All right, so L-Train trying to uh, complete the three-point traditional play. And she gets that one to go. She's got 12 already. Wildcats up 26-13, matching their biggest lead. Actually, it is their biggest lead of 13 of the night. A little pressure here. Quickly down are the Tigers. A little handoff up top as uh, Micah Lovett gets instructions from Coach Hatfield. If you're Coach Taylor up 10, any instructions here in the second half or the same old, same old? Uh, I, I would say it's probably the same old, same old. Uh, you know, this is another Hardawayism, as I'd call it, but the first three minutes of the second half are going to be most important. We've gotten off to a good start here. Uh, would like to see this lead go from 13 or 10 as it was at half to 15 instead of back down to 7. Williams with an open three, top of the key, no good. Great find there by Westerhoff. We'll take that all day. Reese Williams hit three threes Friday night against Watonga. Okay. Curling the basket, nice screen. Straight up, they can't call this one on Schaefer, can they? I bet they will. With some refs, yeah, they don't like her being so. Oh, they're going to go Mr. against. Hoff? No, I think that may have been McCracken down low. It is. It oh, was her okay. first. So that's a correct call. I don't know what else Schaefer could have done. I mean, she has every right to that spot. She didn't even move. She. I thought they might get Megan. Wrongly so, just because she was sideways, as yep. you said. Uh, yep. Technically, because she was there, she's still legal. Um, so they made the right call there. But I, I would like to see Megan not put herself at risk there and just square herself up. Kaylin Cox with her uh, sixth point, fifth and sixth point there. Cross court pass to Jenkins. All the way to the deep baseline corners. Westerhoff looking for that matchup with Dreyer and Schaefer. Schaefer relocates back out. Five out for the Wildcats as they now will run some Guard cuts, and Jenkins will get the uh, foul against the Crescent Tigers. So nice spin move there by Jenkins, and nice call out by Coach Taylor. That'll be number two against Zori Wilson. Second team foul for Crescent. The Wildcats have two themselves. Schaefer in the inbounds into Westerhoff up top. 529, back to Jenkins. Schaefer, low block, nothing there. Shoot it. Three balls up. Bang! Lauren Jenkins, second made three. Nice work. Their inside-out game is working for the Wildcats. Mm -hmm. Wildcats staying with that man press. Right at five, cutting the basket. McCracken tips it out quickly to Jenkins from Schaefer. Go Jenkins score. one on two. Okay. Westerhoff baseline. She will go ahead and drive and kick. Why not? Test it. Three ball up. A little long there. McCracken on the offensive rebound and Good just hustle. outside and out of bounds. So. I agree, good hustle. Wildcats, long three-pointers mean what? Long, long rebounds. Long shots, long rebounds. Yep. So Wildcats uh, working that just outside as uh, McCracken will have a seat. Hobgood with two fouls will check in for Agwood with three fouls. I apologize, we'll check back in. Is there a situation where a learning opportunity for younger players with three fouls to try to manage that? Oh, uh, I mean, that, that's going to be kind of a coaching preference. I'm not going to pretend to, to read Coach Taylor's mind. There's the balance of... Yeah, definitely we want to get them that experience. Um, th it could be a situation where you see her dip into the bench because you've got those two that both have foul trouble. It could also be a situation where, because the two that we're talking about also happen to be young players, that you see um, you see them uh, ha have to manage that situation about to get into playoffs because there's going to be a time you know in the next few weeks where they're going to have to be out there in foul trouble and be able to manage those fouls and also stay on the floor. Jenkins with a couple chances there. Great, strong penetration there. She's unable to finish. She kind of came back out, took a deep breath, and that should be a foul. It's not <laughs> inside to Schaefer in the lane, up and under. She's going to have to shoot it and there show, show I'll, take it. The foul. I'll take it. <laughs> you know, I just want consistent the fishing. I don't care if it's tight or loose, whatever, just consistent. The no. girls, uh, they're allowing them to play no, tonight. So they've been letting them play today. Yep. We talked about it at the beginning. Yep. I'll take it. <laughs> Coach Taylor having the conversation as well as Jenkins, uh, none able to to get to the line, but Schaefer will. Schaefer with already four made free throws, make that five on the night. She's got 11. That'll extend the Wildcat lead up to 15, the biggest of the night as Dreyer will have a seat. Checking in will be number 14, Kylie Bell. 
as Coach Hatfield has, has gone nine deep today. She makes both. She's got six made free throws. Is that 12 points? That, is, points? that is 12 points. You got it spot on, Dr. Rainey. A give and oh, go. Good pass. And we're going to have a foul mm. underneath. Soft I, call. Could have been, a, I think, maybe even a shuffle on the walk. They let it go. Good pass into Micah Lovett. She gets the and one. And the push from behind, that's going to be fourth foul on Abby Hobgood. I don't think Abby Hobgood has played two consecutive minutes without fouling this game. <laughs> and I, I personally love it. You need kind of that aggressive defensive presence. Maybe wind it back a little bit, like we said, learning curve. But I do love the aggression. I would always rather tell a player that you got to calm down than you got to speed up. No, hey, man, I think that's a, that's a great point. And Free Lauren just, yeah, Lauren jumped. So lane violation against Lauren Jenkins. Uh, the Crescent Tigers get another chance there for number 10, Micah Lovett. And misses that one. Loose ball. And somehow in the hands of Lauren Jenkins. She gets it ripped out of her hands. And that's going to go out of bounds. Excellent. And again, Megan Schaefer mm -hmm. just standing tall, straight up, creating turnovers. You don't need to bail out any of the players, especially that far underneath the basket. So, Little. Well, she's got so much length inside. Right. She's strong enough. Like she doesn't need to. Like like you said, her coming down is really going to bail them out because it gives the officials something to call. When the truth is, if she just uses her length, uses her strength, uh, defend or offensive players are going to have a hard enough time trying to score on her. Wildcats will go four out and relocate with a high post, low Boom. block. Jenkins, left hand euro, right hand up. Count it. Actually, did not go in. I apologize, but we'll get the foul. And Jenkins, she must have channeled her inner Vaughn Rainey, and she's sensing that. She must, you must have talked to her, but she's been a very aggressive to the, to yeah, the basket. We, we, I will give Lauren this. She's done a beautiful job of melding the, the good parts of her family members that have come <laughs> ahead of her and doing her best to, to leave behind some of our individual nastier habits. That's all right. I say that like making free throws. That, that is a Lauren Jenkins special. I don't know which sibling or cousin <laughs> she learned it from. I'm sure Buck's at home taking credit for it right now. But, you know, I, I've seen his stat sheet, too, so, so we'll, I don't know. <laughs> well, we used to joke last year that uh, Jonah and Vance should probably shoot three-pointers for their free throws. I think Vance, uh, <laughs> there was a point, I think, his junior year where he was shooting better from three. He, he from was. Three he was. He was. Well, give credit to Lauren. LJ, she's able to get that uh, ooh, nice move to the oh. cup there. Jenkins with the uh, rebound. Up. Oh, if you can. Throw back over. It's okay. stolen. Force the pass. Westerhoff straight up and count it. Wow, that's a tough break there. That'll be a foul against Westerhoff. I think that's going to be number three on her. We'll see what happens. That's the fourth team foul. It is number three. Fourth team foul for the Wildcats. Give credit. Strong move by Kaylin Cox. She's got, uh, looks like she's got four. She's got eight points. And that cut what was a 16-point lead to 14 for the Wildcats. Add another. So back to 15. Full court press again. Jenkins across the timeline. She's getting hounded, hand on her hip. Cross court pass tipped out. Found, finds the hands of Schaefer there. Well, got to reset. No reason to rush here, right? No, no reason to rush play our game. And, you know, we've got it's been at about 13 since about the six minute mark, I think. Would love to get a great possession right here. Coach Taylor will call the timeout as uh, Addison McCracken stops her dribble. He's in trouble. So we'll take a timeout ourselves. We'll be right back. CW TV. Oklahoma Career Tech's been serving up skills for doers just like you for over 100 years. But this ain't your great Grammys and Pop Pop Tech school. Oklahoma's favorite place to learn new skills keeps learning new tricks. Everyone knows the best way to learn is to do it yourself. Sir, you okay? Because you shouldn't have to wait to do what you love. Whatever you choose to do, do you. Oklahoma Career Tech. Absolute Pools, Lawns, and Landscape is not your ordinary pool builder. From traditional to exotic and anything in between, our staff offers paramount quality and service through the entire design and build process. We provide service to the entire OKC metro and surrounding towns. So relax knowing our team is wholeheartedly committed to building a trusting and lasting relationship with you. Visit us on Facebook or give us a call today at 405-285-9729. Absolute Pools, Lawns, and Landscape. Welcome back. Time out. Uh, 233 here, third quarter. Nima to Bobby, Vaughn Rainey, my man Hank Brown, and Maddox Gibson bringing you guys the action today. Appreciate you guys joining us here on War on 74 basketball style. Wildcats at home here at the Show Palace. 
up 13, 33-20. Give credit to the Crescent Tigers. They've kind of bowed up a little bit here over the last couple of possessions and cut into that cash and lead. McCracken, Jenkins, Schaefer, Williams, and Westerhoff for the Thanks, Wildcats. Man. High post kick out around the horn it goes. Back into Schaefer. She'll go back right hand off the glass. No good. A little strong Thanks, rebound so. in the hands of Kylie Bell. And that's kind of what you were talking about, right? Catch yeah, and shoot? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I think that's a good shot. She just missed. And, you know, it happens in basketball. You miss some shots. But I, I, I'd like to see. I think that was a really good possession for the Wildcats on the offensive end, not on the defensive end right there. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I'll, I'll take that shot from Megan, you know, 10 possessions in a row. 6 0 run here by the Crescent Tigers. Schaefer, loose ball. Wow. McCracken gets knocked over, and we're going to have a kick ball. That's going to go to Crescent. That's a tough situation there. Again, here's a, you know, four fouls for each team. It's been pretty physical. Abby Hobgood, the only one in foul trouble for the Wildcats right now. Westerhoff with three. Williams on a nice close out there. Against Cummings. Walk. Ooh. Let me stop. I'm on the air. Actually, that was. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> we love. And we'll have a. Wow. After everything that's happened, we're going to get a little touch foul here against Addison McCracken. And so that one is. Uh, will go up top. It's on the floor. That's just her second. 15 foul against Cashin. We got 131 left here, third quarter. Inbounds coming into Cox. Reese Williams matched up to her cousin versus cousin here. Oh. And that one to go out of bounds. So tip out by Westerhoff. Do you ever think the girls game has an effect on the boys game and how it's called later on? Or do you think they start fresh? You know, I, I've seen some stuff roll over. Generally, I would say it's when things get really heated in the girls game. Then you kind of <laughs> see like a, a tightening in the boys game. Um, or sometimes fan control in a game like this. Uh, I I just I hope to see styles carry over. Okay. Um, but there hasn't been you know any kind of event where the refs have had to get overly involved. So yeah. I think I don't think be, you'll see too much of an effect. Micah Levitt with the uh, obvious reach there. Good call there by the lead official. It'll go out of bounds. That's her first foul. Fifteen foul for Ca uh, Crescent. Five for Cashin. Jenkins with the ball right side under a minute here in the third quarter. And give credit to, uh, to Crescent. They've hung tight. Could have gotten out of hand. Williams looking for the curl and go. Nothing there. We'll have to go. Wow. Quickly down. Left hand layup's no good. Schaefer with the rebound. Quickly out. Jenkins, three on two. Back to the middle. Four. Cup to the rack. And she'll there get the go. foul. And I'll tell you what, the, the, the officials have been very consistent when you've been attacking the basket. It's just been the play where you've been stagnant. They're allowing girls to bump and reach. So give credit to Jenkins. She's going to draw the third foul against number 22, Zori Wilson. She'll go the line. So with 34.2, Wildcats looking to score here right before the end of the third quarter. Jenkins with, already, with five free throws already. Let's make that six. Dang it. I thought that double jinx might work. So substitution, number 12 checking in. That's Tatum Cummings. Checking out will be number 24, Kenzie Bell. Kenzie's got six points here for the uh, Tigers. Jenkins gets that one. The Wildcats scoreless. A couple minutes has been uncorked there a little bit. 34-22. Cross-court pass to Kylie Bell. She'll shoot the long two. Wow. You can see that one coming. Her first points of the game. Nice shot there by Kylie Bell. 20 seconds. McCracken left side. Inside to Schaefer. Jenkins. Oh, Westerhoff baseline three with 10 seconds. Skips off. Did it touch anybody? It sure did. So it looked like it was off the hands of number 15, Kalen Cox. Wildcats will retain 8.2 on the clock. McCracken on the sideline. We'll get to West Rough top. Wildcats will have to catch and do something here. Jenkins looking for that curl screen. Dump down to Schaefer. Up and under at the basket. Oh, well, and they say no yeah. basket. No shot. So that'll be the end of the third quarter. Wildcats up 10, 34-24. We'll have fourth quarter action here in a little bit. Hang tight. Cash and Wildcats TV.
Texas all season. All right, welcome back to Catching Wildcats TV. Appreciate you guys joining us. Neiman and Bobby Vaughn Rainey bringing you tonight's action from the Show Palace. Game one is the Catching Wildcats taking on the Lady Tigers up 10, 34-24. It was 8-6 to six after one, 23-13 after two, 34-24 after three. So give credit to the Crescent Tigers. Wildcats extended that lead up to 15, maybe even, was it even 16 points? It may have been, it was in that range. 16, yeah. And so give them credit as they worked it back. Wildcats will have the ball here. It'll be Jenkins, McCracken, Westerhoff, Schaefer, Williams, Abby Hobgood with foul trouble. Williams will get the high post. Kick back out, top of the key. Let me get one. In and out, Schaefer with the offensive rebound. Shoots it back up. And that one falls in the hands of a Crescent Tiger. Tipped out, loose ball. Williams up top on number 20. Aja House. Kaylin Cox, three ball, it's good. Wow, flat footed. She's had a monster second half and that's a seven point lead here for the Wildcats. Need a good possession right here. Jenkins That'll in work. the cup. No continuation, I would have allowed it, but that one will be on the floor. That is team foul number seven for Crescent. So that'll move Jenkins to the line for one of one. Again, give credit to Kaylin Cox. She only had four in the first half. She's come back with Eight in the second for 12 total. Almost half the points for the Crescent Tigers. Jenkins, who has six free throws herself here in the game. We're back at the line, one and one. Bang. Ooh, low. Come on. A little long on that one. That'll go in the hands of Bell. Good close out there by Addison McCracken and Schaefer. No walk call there on the shuffle inside past the Cox. Wow, that's a walk call, and they do yeah, get that one. So. Good work, and I don't mind. I like that move, Kaylin Cox, you know, dropping that shoulder and creating some space. She just had already made a couple shuffles. So it's like a little uh, zone press here for Coach Hatfield. Back and forth is a recipe here for the Wildcats. Is that something you agree with? I'd like to see them get down when, as soon as they can. I mean, they're breaking it just fine. I think you might be able to get a little bit of transition if we would uh, throw it ahead. I think it's Megan or Abby Hobgood better up on the sidelines and then get the quick reversal because um, we've had some success getting downhill when we do have transition. And that was intended for uh, Jenkins. That's knocked out. It'll be full timeout. Oh, actually, 30-second variety here. We'll we'll go to a quick timeout ourselves. We'll be right back. Cash and Wildcat CD. At Maples Nixon Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people, and our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do but it's not all that we are. We care. We'll stand beside you throughout the entire legal process, not just as lawyers, but as your friends. We are Maples Nicks and Diesel Horst, and we are here to help. All right, fourth quarter action. Out of bounds, Wildcats out of the timeout. Inside of Jenkins, opposite block, it's good. Great job there by Reese Williams finding Lauren Jenkins. She's got another one. Wildcats are able to answer there. 36-27, back up to nine. 6.39, tipped out. Oh, we'll have a foul from behind. I'm not sure what Reese Williams was, was having the conversation with. She wasn't happy about it, whatever it was. So that's just her second for Smiley. Out of bounds, little four high as they roll down the block. Inbounds comes in to number 10, Micah Lovett. Callan Cox, or I'm sorry, that's uh, Tayton Cummings. We'll give it to Cox. Three balls up. That one's long. Fight for the rebound. Crescent Tigers getting an offensive rebound. Wildcats have done well on the defensive side. Loose ball out of bounds. Hey, kudos to Schaefer. I love seeing that. Again, didn't reach, didn't paw down on her. Turnover She's wild. Been playing. She's been playing really tough, like you said, not fouling, which has been really smart because I know it was an issue early on in the season. and. That's going to be something that's going to pay huge dividends in the playoffs. Well, Cats get it across the timeline, 6-10. Up nine, Jenkins up top at the Paul, around the horn to Westerhoff. Schaefer will look to screen, back cut, nice look. Reverse layup, actually yeah, reverse layup is good. good Westerhoff, great move. That's just our first points of the game. We'll take it. Wildcats back up 11. What do you think about that move? I like this. The finish was really nice because, like you said, I think you started to say reverse. I thought she was going to go underneath, but that quick right-hand scoop on the left-hand side. We'll have a foul on the rebound. That's going to go against Schaefer. I'm not sure what she did, but that'll be one and one. So 
Both teams with seven fouls, single bonus. And right there is where you see what the rest of the game Shavers played has paid off. Because normally, I say normally, early in the season, yep. she'd have two what, what what you might call, for lack of a better word, dumb fouls or cheap <laughs> fouls early right, on. Right. And then that one's going to be her third or her fourth. The way she's played right now, she's got uh, one foul, five minutes to go. Uh, no harm, no foul, and we get to keep playing aggressive yeah, basketball. Yeah, great, great point. I mean, it is kind of a shock to see only one foul coming in. And I love it. See, I, I thought she didn't have any before all that, but I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to be the one to jinx it. But since she brought it up herself, you know, I felt safe to talk about it there. <laughs> so one end, the front end of the one and one was missed there by the Crescent Tiger. Actually, on the rebound, Reese Williams was fouled. She Shout gets Reese. Reese is able to get her first point to the second half. She's got three. That'll extend the lead back up to 12 for the Wildcats. And, again, Reese, have a little conversation here with Reese and number 24, Kenzie Bell. A little action there. Things getting chippy. Williams makes both. Nice work there by the junior guard. Quickly down, 541. It's Cox to, to Cummings. Around the horn to A.J. House. Love it. Nice move by Bell. Left-hand layup, no good. Rebound, good it was a great job. Could have been a jump ball. Loose ball on the ground. Good hustle. I love it, though. Hobgood with four bounds. fouls. Would have liked it. It was a good call on your part. I mean, you would have liked to have called the jump ball mm -hmm. there as both players had their hand on it. But, you know, referees allowing it to play. We'll have a timeout here. Is this a full timeout? I think it is. We'll go to timeout ourselves. We'll be right back. Cash and Wildcats TV. Yeah. Oklahoma's number one high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at scordle.com slash stream. All right, welcome back. Fourth quarter action. So if you're Coach Taylor Vaughn, what's the conversation here? She called the timeout. What, what's going on in her head? Right now is you want, you want to get two, three good possessions on offense, get a couple of buckets, but more importantly, you need to get three stops in a row is what it comes down to at this point. Five minutes left, up 13. Uh, this is where they're either going to get back in the game or you're going to finish the game, one or the other. I'd, I'd be shocked if this stayed at 13. Um, this is this is probably going to go one way or another for, for the Wildcats or the Tigers. Good closeout on the block there is number 15. Kalen Cox was diving. Westroff doing great work here underneath. Wildcats manning up. Uh-oh, that'll switch there. Right-hand drive, love it Good to defense. the cop. Ooh. She's going to get the foul. So we talked about it. You know, the, the, they've been pretty consistent on drives and takes mm -hmm. on Colin. That's going to be fifth, fifth foul for Abby Hobgood. That's unfortunate for her. She'll go to the bench. And she'll get some, she'll get a, some uh, I don't know if it's, it's, it's any consoling from Coach Taylor or coaching. Uh, but uh, that'll send uh, Micah Lovett to the line. And good take there by the guard. You know, knowing most likely that Hobgood only has that has four fouls. Absolutely, it's a smart play on on uh, number ten. Love it. Yep, on, that's on, right. On, on Micah's part there, um, and th that's you know great game for Abby. And I say that without any kind of sarcasm or anything. She knows her role. She's out there. She's playing yep. hard. She's out there to get fouls. I would be much more disappointed if we ended the game and she had no fouls. Another lane violation. This one against Reese Williams. I think that little stall there on that shot. Yeah, she's got a little bit of hitch in that shot. Yeah, a little bit. Of, yeah, that's exactly right. Back in the olden days, Braden Shank used to get some other teams with that. She misses that one. Chase out by McCracken. Loose ball. Yeah, she did. I guess she'll be stepped out of bounds. A little bit of a push there, but uh, nonetheless, turnover. Wildcats will go to Crescent. 5.07, Wildcats up 12. Kaylin Cox with a wall screen. She doesn't make the three. Wow, Westerhoff going up high for that. Gets knocked out of her hands. No foul. Cox the bucket. Mm. I don't know what Lauren Jenkins could do in that situation. She was straight up. Uh, maybe saying she got there late. I thought it was pretty no, clean. It, no, it's all right. Yeah. We love our officials. We can't have the game, but we don't always have to agree with them. That was, a, in my opinion, a bad call. That's a second team foul or second foul 
on Jenkins. Free throw counts for Cox. I don't know what Lauren's supposed to do in that situation, except maybe flop. Nine fouls for the Wildcats, eight for Crescent. Great block out there by the Wildcats. Yeah. Schaefer going up. Good. Quickly down to the middle. No reach call to the cup with a block. And there you go, a little yeah, bit of bump. Okay. I'll take it. So this time that'll be Dreyer. Good take there by, by Westerhoff. That's the fourth so foul on Dreyer. Yeah. Yep. And that'll, so it'll be a two-shot foul. Next foul by either team will be double bonus for the other. Westerhoff makes a free throw. She's got three. 41-29. Now we'll have substitution as Dreyer and House take a seat. Yeah, that one is good. Schaefer with an offensive putback, hey. and it's good. It. Nice work there by Schaefer. She earned that one. Her first field goal of the second half. Wildcats now extend that lead back up to 14. Big three. Schaefer going up. No foul. I'll Straight up, Bird. Job. I'm sorry, Bell doesn't make that one. Good work there by Schaefer. Quickly down left side, Williams back up top to Schaefer. Again, Schaefer doing good work. Schaefer deep on the block, one right hand off bucket, the glass. Yep. It's good. One on one, quick bucket. Great find. You want to see? 45-29, 16 point lead. Tying the biggest lead of the night. And you said it, it could go one of two ways, right? All right, and let's see if we can get this stop. Cox with a drive, Schaefer with a rebound. And you can put it away right there. Bodies basically. collide, good Williams, pass. fast Lay break, up. right hand is good. good. Take a timeout, I'm not sure. They don't. No. So uh, Wildcats up 18, biggest lead of the night. Loose ball, Jenkins fine for it. <laughs> She'll Ooh. The, Long way, that timeout. Let's see if they call timeout. I think Jenkins was asking for it. What's going to happen here? <laughs> Jenkins is like, I had it. They call jump ball, so we'll have some substitution here. Jenkins will have a seat as well. And this is what I call a Lauren shut up. Kind of <laughs> what that was. Charlie Carson is checked in as well as uh, Addison McCracken. And we'll and we'll have a foul down low. This one will go against, wow. So uh, off ball official there gets Schaefer. And that's gonna be two shots. That's gonna be her second. So with 344, this game's not over with, 47-29. Plenty of time, and if you watch the Wellston game, you know anything's possible here for the Wildcats. I've seen, I've seen us have moments of greatness in the last three minutes and <laughs> moments of what the heck are we doing? Have we ever played basketball before in the last three minutes? So Kylie Bell with the bucket, the free throw. She gets both. She's got four. 16-point lead, full court press. Westerhoff left side. Back to Williams, to McCracken, dumped down to Schaefer. Good find. She had Carson on the backside, but wisely pulls back up, takes some time off. No reason to rush here. 331 worked the possession. No shot clock here. What are your thoughts on shot clock, Vaughn? I would personally love to see it. Yep. Um, one is I think it makes it, I, th I think it's basketball. And for the kids that do go into college, you know, uh, it, it's a great prep because you have some other states that have already started to implement that. Yep. Um, I guess you'll see it in the bigger schools first if it were to come to Oklahoma. Um, and then the the plus side of it in high school basketball, because obviously most kids aren't going on to play college and right. do those things. But I do think, you know, you have kids that – the kids that do matter too, the good players, the, the people that are really working at it. I, I don't think it's fair to neutralize the work that they put in by making it a four possession game right. and a quarter things like that. Yeah, so I do understand the argument that people say is yeah. like, well, learn to play against the defense that you're right. playing against. And I understand that, but I think whatever you're going to do, play the game. I right. think you can do that in – you can run whatever defense you want, but run right. it for 40 seconds. You can run whatever offense you want, but if it's not working for 40 seconds, well, try it again the next possession. So yep. I'm a proponent of it. Uh, I think you'll see it uh, sooner than later, but you know we'll, we'll see kind of what the the high school basketball culture around here says about it. Yeah, certainly basketball has taken off around here in Oklahoma. I mean, just based on free balls up, just based on just kids going on to play at the next mm -hmm. level and what we've seen. We have Cash and Wildcats, the boys team, have uh, close to 38 kids playing basketball. Three balls up, 
no good. Chase out looks like it will go out of bounds. Yeah, and I'm, I'm with you as well. I, I, am, I, I believe 40, 45 seconds it should be enough for you to be able to run an offensive set. And it is. It, it's, it's, you're losing it sometimes in a regular possession that may go a minute, minute five. You're losing yeah. an eighth of, an, of a quarter, you know. And, and, and so, uh, you know, people say play defense. I'm like, well, play offense, yeah. right? You know, let, let's go play some offense. Mm-hmm. Let's see what you can do. Uh, but certainly if you polled all the kids, I bet you they would have, they'd probably want the – and you know what? On the flip side, it does reward kids. If you're playing good defense for 35 yeah. seconds, you should be rewarded for that. You, you got, got to stop. stop. Mm-hmm. You should be rewarded for that as well. Out of bounds, the Wildcats will get it. Full court press again. We've seen it all night. Jenkins will work right side against Lovett. She'll curl back across the timeline. Good score. Back out to Charlie Carson. Wildcats up 15, 48-33 at two minutes. Good cut. Cut. The nice. basket. Westerhoff. Oh, Westerhoff, aggressive. She catches a lot there. She's slow to get up. Nice take there by Westerhoff. That'll be foul number two against Micah Lovett. Westerhoff has earned two shots here. Got a little conversation there. I'm not sure if they give her a sec to kind of catch her. You've been on the bat end a couple of times on on uh, on uh, drives to the hole. Oh yeah, I've been on. The, Luke used to tell me I spent more time on the floor than anybody in the country, <laughs> and he was probably right. I told him, Luke I spent a little too much time in the weight room. I got to get my foul call somehow. So you know, <laughs> I was I was a heavy guard, so when I hit the ground, it made a lot of noise. You got that boom. And refs would just kind of reactively blow the whistle. Well, I'm sure they had. To, I'm sure the defenders paid for it as well. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 49-33, Wildcats back up 16. Love it, right side. Dumps down. Good defense. Great job. Nice. Yeah, give credit to uh, Charlie Carson on the on the closeout, reading that one. Wildcats with Addison McCracken. Westerhoff will have a seed as she was banged up a little bit here at 206. Jenkins checks back in. He's that tipped out. Well, That's damn, a, low. Good defense. Yeah, actually, I was about really to say it was. It was. As Cox just kind of a little out of control. Really McCra- weird offense. McCracken with the tip out. Give credit basket to her. 49-35. Wildcats up 14. Jenkins will curl back out. Wildcats will slow it down. Minute 40. At this point, do you have to do you foul if your coach uh, if your coach for Hatfield? I think I just go get a steal, and if I happen to foul, I foul. Um, they may be, you know, I think they've got a younger team too. They may yep. be just giving pressure and taking the learning curve, but we'll see what happens here. So Coach Taylor with the timeout here, just trying to make sure we don't have any turnovers. We'll go to timeout ourselves. Wildcats up big, minute 20. Hang tight. We'll be right back. Kyle and Gina Van Druff have the answers to all your real estate and insurance needs. These guys will have you covered in a one-stop shopping experience. They are local agents, local supporters, and active in the Cashin community. They are also proud parents of past and present Cashin students. Kyle and Gina help their clients make the right choice. Don't wait till it's too late. Call 405-607-4300. Go Wildcats and number 88. Let's have a great year. Walk it up. Get you some. Now it's. Okay, welcome back, Cash and Wildcats TV. Neiman Abavi, Vaughn Rainey bringing you tonight's action. Game one here is the Cash and Wildcats taking on the Lady Tigers, War on 74. And it's the Wildcats who are up 14, 49-35. Big shout out to Hank Brown and Maddox Gibson on the camera. Can't do it without them. And we appreciate you guys joining us here on the Squirtle.tv network, free of charge. Big thanks to our fantastic sponsors. You'll see that, Maple Nicks and Dieselhorst. All the great folks that make this free of charge for you guys. Uh, Wildcats with the inbound here. Sierra McCracken. Uh, looks like we've got some uh, other folks checking in. We, uh, looks like we've got uh, Elliot Ratcliffe sighting. She's got the ball right now as well as uh, number 22. That's Reese Patterson. A freshman Jaylee Harpin as well with the ball. She'll work it around. And Bella Butler. Love seeing that from the sophomore, or sophomore guard. We'll have a foul. Looks like he's going to go to the line. Looks like it'll be Jaylee Harp, the freshman to the line. You were a four-year starter, were you not? I was, I was. Back when, you know, there were 12 people on the roster, <laughs> uh, freshman through senior, but, uh, you know, I got in at the right time. 
Jalia Harp, great shot there. She's got her first bucket of the game. So if you were uh, one of these folks uh, coming in, what, what's your mindset here if you're coming off the bench with about a minute here? Right now you're trying to get better. You work your butt off every day in practice, uh, usually in the game with your sweatshirt still on. Uh, but right now you're going out, you're, you're putting into, into practice the things that you've been working on every single day. Uh, and, you know, we're late in the season, so maybe you're not trying to get extra minutes for this season, but, you know, we also don't have any seniors out here. So you're trying to show Coach Taylor the improvement that you've made uh, throughout the last several months, uh, both in team practice, when you've been getting in the gym by yourself, and, you know, starting to put, you know, bugs, bugs in the coach's ears about, you know, I'm going to be dependable next year and going forward. Love it. So uh, give credit to Jay Lee Harp there with the block and the run out there by Bella Butler and, Elliot Ratcliffe getting the turnover on the walk. So good work there by the cash and subs. 32 seconds. As you say, trying to find that valuable time to grow. Laney Woody's checked in, junior, and we'll have a walk up yeah, top. And yeah, you're staring at a few girls that are waiting for track season as well. So Wildcat uh, Lady Track Team led by Coach uh, Tony Wood getting warmed up here as well, looking for another run to state. But we got a little basketball here before that. 17 seconds on the clock, Ratcliffe up top. Jaylee Harp on the pressure oh, on yeah, probably. Cummings. Looks like we'll have a foul down low. That one will go against Laney Woody, the junior. Last name is pretty familiar. If you know uh, Jacob Woody, Bella Woody, former Cashin basketball players, both at Southwestern. Southwestern Christian University, mm -hmm. yes. Bella's playing soccer and I think a little track, and Jacob's playing uh, basketball out there for them. In fact, got to go out and watch him. Still a huge three-point threat, great left hand. Free throw's good there by number 12, Tatum Cummings, her first points of the game. 51-36. Looks like we'll have another turnover. <laughs> So with six seconds, let's put this one in the books. Let's put a bow on it. Wildcats move to 9-11 and 11 on a three-game winning streak. Love seeing that. Shot goes up, and that'll be it. As the Wildcats victorious, 51-36. Hang tight with this. We're going to switch over to the boys' stream. Hang tight. And uh, Vaughn and I will bring you a second uh, game action here in a couple minutes. Wildcats victorious over the Crescent Lady Tigers. Hang tight. We'll be right back.